Good morning, everyone. I'm Inga Rees, the director of the Center for the History of Collecting here at the Frick Collection and Frick Art Reference Library. And I'd like to welcome you and commend you for coming out in the snow for this full day-long symposium, El Greco Comes to America, the Discovery of a Modern Old Master. As most of you know, I'm sure, uh, 2014 marked the 400th anniversary of the artist's death and prompted many institutions in the United States and in Spain as well uh, to stage special exhibitions um, and events honoring that moment. Um, the National Gallery of Art brought together all of the paintings uh, by the master held in Washington and Baltimore, uh, the Washington and Baltimore area. And here in New York, the paintings in the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Hispanic Society of America hang gloriously together in the Metropolitan Museum's European Paintings Galleries. Um, and uh, here at the Frick Collection, uh, which uh, our El Greco paintings were purchases by Henry Clay Frick and therefore cannot travel even the 12 blocks up to the Met. Um, so they are hanging happily together in the Oval Room and I hope you'll take a little extra time today uh, to look look at them uh, more closely. So the activities of the curators presenting works familiar to all of us from a fresh perspective encouraged our Center for the History of Collecting to take the opportunity to commemorate this just past anniversary year with a symposium focused on the collectors of that one-of-a-kind artist, El Greco, who so boldly charted uh, the new territory uh, in collecting, the collectors did, that is, not El Greco, um, often regarding this master as the father of modernism. Duncan Phillips even called him the first impassioned expressionist. Those of you who have become regulars at the center's twice yearly symposia, and I know there are quite a few of you in the audience today, uh, will note that the format of this symposium is just a little bit different from our norm. And this is because we've designed the day as something of a hybrid between a full-fledged symposium and a study day. Uh, the presentations are a little less broad gauged, taking their cues from the Washington and New York exhibitions. And at the end of the day, we are encouraging all of you to spend time in our gallery uh, talking with one another about the collectors as well as the artist. Um, there also, I should emphasize, is a beautiful, beautiful El Greco uh, lent to us in the exhibition from the National Galleries of Scotland in the East Gallery, so we will keep that open at the end of the day, too. In other respects, though, this symposium accords with the same objectives as all of our others, giving us an opportunity to explore through the richly interdisciplinary field of the history of collecting, how collecting in a certain category of art, in this case just one quite idiosyncratic artist's work, can offer lessons about larger cultural contexts of the collector's own times. Uh, this is why some of the papers you'll hear today take into account how the behavior of collectors of El Greco's art were influenced by travel experiences, the roles that were played by artists, advisors, and dealers, as well as the influence of literature and scholarship. As always, this symposium was organized with the thought that all of the papers should resonate with both a general and a specialized audience. Uh, we do this knowing that the content of the presentations is absorbed differently by different listeners, and we can all gain from the exchange of reactions and ideas that this forum offers to you. Ultimately, our hope is that this occasion, complemented by the Center's other programs for fellowships, publications, and oral histories, will, enc will encourage further research and to expand and enrich our knowledge of collecting history in this country. I couldn't have been more delighted by the positive response to the idea of holding this symposium that, that we received, uh, both among our own curators and our colleagues at the Met and the Hispanic Society. So our collective El Greco in New York efforts, as well as Washington's, will be wonderfully celebrated by those who know the most about the works on display. I would, however, like to single out Jose Luis Colomer with great thanks for bringing up the idea of holding this symposium and helping us shape the program. 
But thanks are due as well to Ian Wardropper, director of the Frick Collection, and Stephen Berry, the Andrew W. Mellon chief librarian of the Frick Art Reference Library, for their unerring support of the center's activities. Ian very much regrets that he cannot be uh, here to join us on this occasion. He's in a much warmer place in Mexico City <laughs> for the Association of um, Museum Directors meetings. Um, and th the date of the symposium had to be changed, and he could not clear his calendar. But above all, I'd like to single out the center's assistant directors, Samantha Deutsch and Esme Quadbach, who so calmly and willingly, as all of you know, see to every detail of the planning and execution of an event like this one. I really could never thank them enough. Last but far from least, I'd like to thank the Stavros Niarchos Foundation for its support of this symposium and for their recognition of the important ways that these events kindle new ideas. So without further ado, let me ask you to please silence your cell phones and then I can introduce our first speaker.